So my name is Yohei Sasaki from Japan. Uh, let me introduce the, myself and the, my company, and the, I will give a talk about our crowdfunding instances in our company. The, first of all, the, I'm a lead developer of Rakuten Platform as a Service. The, and uh, I'm very fan of many open source projects like Apache CouchDB, Ruby on Rails, and Node.js. And also, the, I'm a fan of the crowdfunding. I'm a member of the Japanese local committee for crowdfunding JP. And also, I manage the crowdfunding instances at my home to manage my applications. About Rakuten, the, we are the global internet service company. The many businesses are launched in Japan. The picture shows the, all of the, the, our domestic businesses the, from the affiliate blogs, the pictures, uh, and the golf course reservations, and so on, from security insurance. And the main, uh, our main business is uh, e-commerce services called Rakuten Ichiba. And uh, we have, uh, in, in Japan, we have the 1,000 developers and uh, more than the 70 teams. And uh, every week, we deploy many applications in the week. And uh, we are going to the globalize our company. So the, we started the globalize with a special project called Englishization. The, this means uh, <laughs> very strange culture, but uh, I'm very fan of this project. For the Englishization means uh, to use English even in Japan. So that we, I worked at Japan, but I can't speak Japanese in our office. So we need to speak English with everyone so that uh, you can join our company without any barrier of language. <laughs> We've started the Rakuten platform as a service. The co we call it RPAS uh, two years ago. And uh, this is our private cloud services that we deployed crowdfunding V1 on, on premise environment. And we started from the 2011 December and support from develop development environment to production environment. So now the several services running in the production environment on top of our platform as a service. And why we choose Cloud Foundry? The, there were the three factors for the, we measure the platform as a service. The main purpose is uh, reducing cost in, on the infrastructure operations, and also the easy to deploy for application developers. And moreover, the, the we, our business expand to global. We need to deploy applications not only in Japan, but also in Europe, America, so on, so that the, we need to provide the transparency on the infrastructure, because uh, uh, infrastructure person is different in Japan and Europe, so that uh, a bit uh, difficult to, the same infra to have the same infrastructure. So the, providing the RPAS, uh, for the uh, for the purpose for the infrastructure transparency. So as a result, the we have a big change. The our traditional development process is on uh, left side. The developer asks the infrastructure team to uh, build the servers, the make our VMs, and install middlewares, and so on. The configure the load balancers, and so on. So there are a lot of the workflows in our company. But the, after we introduced the RPAS with Cloud Foundry, the developer just say the push his applications. So the RPAS, we provide the RPAS command, uh, like the CF command. The developer uses the RPAS push to deploy their applications. So the, some of the developers integrate the command line tool with their Jenkins so that everything in the development process is automated to the deployment. As a result, the, from actual users, the, they save the infrastructure operation cost, reduce, reducing the 90%. So the, this, is, this was a big change for us. So the, I recommend the all of infrastructure team to use Cloud Foundry to reduce the, such a cost and also the the most benefit is not only for application developers, but also for us, the infrastructure engineers, to develop the new things for infrastructures. 
And uh, we are still on the Cloud Foundry V1 system. Uh, there is a historical reasons for that. The middle line is a CFV1 line, and the top is a CFV2 lines, and the bottom is our RPath lines. The, at first, we started to integrate our authentication system to the, our uh, RPath so that we integrate it with Atlassian Cloud. And next, uh, we are uh, integrating our logging infrastructure on top of FluentD so that uh, we need to uh, uh, make a governance for the loggings for e-commerce. And also that we support to provide the uh, Redis cluster with uh, using Sentinels and uh, also the integrate with Clusterx. Uh, this is a MySQL compatible appliance software. Practices I recommend the firm the, who started use Cloud Foundry. The, as we d did, the, use the Cloud Foundry as a kernel, not the full stack software. So the pick up the Cloud Foundry kernel, the DA, the cloud controllers, health managers, and the routers. So the, and the clarify the what Cloud Foundry does and what Cloud Foundry does not support. So the, I think the well supported part is the application runtimes. So now the, the Bluetooth system support the build packs so that easy to extend, extend to the uh, runtimes. And also the, uh, please be careful about uh, need improvement parts, the, such as the uh, uh, cluster data set. And also the monitoring, the logging, the alerting, we have a lot of the focuses on the system. And now we are focusing on the more web-like features like the uh, flex we call it flexible routing, like the most React features. This is uh, useful for the A-B testing or uh, SEO marketing and so on, and also the trying to integrate the uh, uh, database platform as a service, and also the optimizing the multi data center deployment because we have uh, multiple data centers in different locations, so that uh, we need to optimize the deployment of the cloud foundries, and f the finally that we need to fill the gap of the with our system with the CFV2. At last, the more details, we can have a technical conference that the October 26th. The, this site is tech.rakten.co.jp is also the powered on the, our platform as a service. So you can access, but the, the still the, uh, we are constructing. So the, please wait for the updates. So thank you for very much. Thank you very much.